there is no evidence to show that cancer patients as such are at a higher risk of getting COVID, but they have a more severe outcome if they get COVID. Oncologists are changing or if people are getting chemotherapy drugs injectable, they're trying to change it to oral drugs for the duration so that uh, the treatment still goes on and treatment is not interrupted. The whole hospital has become a COVID hospital like LNGP. So our social workers have tried to get uh, patients transferred to other uh, private hospitals where they don't charge so much. Cancer patients should not be scared to say that they have cancer and they should not be isolated and they should not be shunned because they have cancer. In this video, we're going to tell you how you can help cancer patients. We're going to tell you how oncologists are changing the prescriptions for cancer patients. And most importantly, we're going to tell you, are cancer patients more vulnerable to COVID? Hello all. Welcome to this episode of Doctors Talk. Today we have Dr. Reena Sharma, who's presently the medical director of quality management and research at CanSupport. From 2014, she's been the head of palliative care field services at CanSupport. An MBBS from CMC Ludhiana, she's done her national fellowship in palliative medicine from IPM Kozikor. She's an MSc palliative medicine from Cardiff University at Wales. I read about the vision of the can support, which aims to provide a caring and supportive society where people with cancer and their families, you know, find dignity, hope and comfort. Can you yes. please explain what is can support and can you explain the vision of can support for all our viewers, ma'am? Can support is an NGO. It's a non-governmental organization. It was registered as a society in 1996 by Harmala Gupta, who founded it and she was a cancer survivor and it from her own experience, she decided to start this NGO. Our main aim is to provide, provide information, support, and palliative care to cancer patients and their families. Our vision is to have a caring and supportive society where cancer patients and their families may with, live with care, dignity, and uh, comfort. The aim is that all patients, like when her mala ma'am started this society at that time, people would was were scared of the word cancer. They would not mention it. She felt that it should not be. It should be open. It should not be that people are scared and there should be no stigma around it. There's a lot of stigma to having the diagnosis. Even when I joined Cancer Support, people would uh, tell us that don't tell our neighbors that this a, fa a family member who has cancer because then they will not uh, visit us or they will. Uh, isolate us. So that should not happen. So the aim is to have a society where cancer patients should not be scared to say that they have cancer and they should not be isolated and they should not be shunned because they have cancer. And they should be able to live in dignity. And also if people have advanced disease, it should not, they should be able to receive treatment as long as possible, but it should also be possible that they re receive good pain and symptom management, which is what palliative care is about. Okay. So that they have a peaceful death at the end, a good Ab death. What we absolutely. Call. So ma'am, right now we are facing a pandemic. In the regular times when okay. we didn't have the pandemic, what is it that can support does? You know, all the activities that can support does and where all is the geographical reach of can support? Is it in India? Is it all over India? Is it in certain states? It's out of India. Please tell Tell us about the geography reach of cancer. First of all, about the different services we provide. We provide a number of services to cancer patients and their families. Our main program is home-based palliative care. So we have multidisciplinary teams of doctors, nurses, and counselors who go to patients' homes and provide pain and symptom management and psychosocial support to the patients and their families. Uh, besides this, we have uh, we run daycare services for patients who are getting treatment in government hospitals like at Ames and uh, Safdajan. So daycare service is actually respite care for those patients who are undergoing treatment, cancer treatment, like chemotherapy and radiotherapy. So people come here uh, for uh, some change in the, for lightening of their mood. They have di their different therapies, they have counseling sessions, they may have laughter therapy they may have some uh, outings to go somewhere so it give, brings a change to their the grim reality of their, that they're facing the treatment that they're facing and also we provide because it, our, most of our care is for uh, people who are or from the lower socioeconomic group so they also get uh, nutritional support at these daycare sessions and the daycare sessions are divided like for children for adults for teenagers we have different daycare sessions then also other services that we have we have a telephone helpline 
which provides information on anything you want to know about cancer and services that are available in Delhi NCR, any equipment you need, any you want uh, some treatment which is of lesser uh, where I mean like which is cheaper than in pr private hospitals but you don't want to go to a government hospital so all these different types of information uh, the helpline provides Absolutely. and then we also have our social worker that is third res uh, party resource facilitation where they uh, provide uh, financial assistance to patients and also assistance in uh, procuring other items that they may require during their treatment we provide training to uh, palliative care training to doctors, nurses and counselors, whoever wants to learn palliative care. And we also pro uh, give workshops in medical colleges and nursing colleges to make uh, the medical community aware about palliative care. We also have uh, cancer awareness se sessions for colleges, schools, factories, anganwaris for anybody who wants it. And we actively go out to give cancer awareness sessions so people are aware of this disease. Because in our country, majority of people are diagnosed in a advanced stage of disease when it is difficult to cure the person and this is because of lack of awareness of cancer absolutely I and mean, you uh, i also asked about the geographical reach of cancer ah, so yes uh, cancer uh, cancer port has its services in the whole of delhi ncr and also in merit in up that is and in amritsar and Batinda and punjab so in delhi ncr we cover noida gurgaon faridabad all the ncr areas and Ghazibad. That's great, ma'am. So, ma'am, as we, you know, right now face this grim reality of COVID-19, ma'am. So, you know, a uh, lot of cancer hospitals have been converted into COVID-only facilities. What should patients be doing who need immediate help? What can cancer support do to help these patients? Most cancer patients, uh, these days, there's a lot of tele uh, teleconsultations occurring. So, cancer patients, first of all, should always remain in touch with their oncologists. Even government hospitals are doing uh, teleconsultations, I believe. Many hospitals are providing some limited amount of OPD services for the patients who are serious. I mean, like the patients who are receiving active treatment and, but other patients should remain in, in touch with their oncologists. Where uh, possible, oncologists are changing or if people are getting chemotherapy drugs injectable, they're trying to change into to oral drugs for the duration so that uh, the treatment still goes on and treatment is not interrupted. And uh, can support for these patients, what we're trying is like where people are have undergoing active treatment like their chemotherapy, where the hospitals, uh, the whole hospital has become a COVID hospital like LNGP. So our social workers have tried to get uh, patients transferred to other uh, private hospitals where they don't charge so much, where they for, they have a certain number of patients for whom they will give, uh, they will provide treatment at a uh, cheaper rate. And so our uh, social workers have helped patients to get transferred to those hospitals. And then they've also tried to get surgeries, like we have two, three hospitals who help, who do cheap surgeries for patients whom we refer to them. So we have uh, tried to get patients have, get their surgery. Yeah, ma'am, that's a, that's a great amount of service that Cancer Port is doing for all the cancer patients. People yeah. with cancer at any stage, are they at a higher risk of getting COVID-19? Actually, research hasn't shown that cancer patients have a higher risk, but cancer patients have a risk of a, getting a more severe outcome if they get COVID. Especially if you actually, they say all patient, cancer patients, even cancer survivors have lesser immunity than the normal population so they all of them have a greater risk of uh, having a more severe outcome if they get covid uh, and uh, the more the greater risk is in those patients who are getting active treatment like chemotherapy and radiotherapy or those who have got progressive disease so all there is no evidence to show that cancer patients as such are at a higher risk of getting covid but they have a more severe outcome if they get COVID. So ma'am, you know, uh, I also want to ask you about the possible initiatives or interventions, you know, that are not currently there, but can really help the cancer patients while the infrastructure is dealing with the COVID crisis. Uh, I think we should probably, there should be more teleconsultations, especially with the government hospitals, they should have more teleconsultations. And then probably palli palliative care is one, because many of our patients have advanced disease. So at least palliative care should be available for all patients to manage their pain and symptoms. Teleconsultations should be there for all patients. They are available and many of our patients are being able to contact their oncologists. I think there should be greater availability of that. Absolutely. Ma'am, now I want to ask you a question of hope. Question, you know, which lightens up everybody. And, you know, I want to really ask you because you are dealing with palliative care and dealing uh, with cancer patients. So if there is one wish 
what will that wish be? Uh, first should be that the pandemic should end. I think the second wave, we, we should be able to de deal with whatever waves that come after this, we should deal with in a better way. We should be more prepared and take more precautions. Actually, everybody let go of their the precautions and I mean, most people, many people. So we should not relax our, all the precautions we're taking like hand sanitization and wearing masks in public and not meeting too many people. So ma'am, great ma'am, you know, you mentioned so much about, you know, can support, you mentioned about how, uh, you know, people who are not able to get help from government hospitals because of COVID, how they can take the help of can support. You also mentioned about how, whether cancer patients are at a risk of coronavirus or not. You also mentioned about the possible in initiatives that are possible in the future for cancer patients. I also want to tell the viewers that can support is working for a very long time in supporting all the patients and giving them respect, dignity, hope, and comfort. So I would request you through this video to let, let the people know, let the viewers know that what can they do to help can support initiatives in helping cancer patients? Uh, can support is a charity. I mean, it is a non-governmental organization and we run on donations. All the services we provide to cancer patients uh, uh, are free free of cost to the patients. And majority of our patients, more than 70% of our patients are from the lower income or destitute group of society. It would be of great help if people would donate in, donate in whatever way they can, their services, in kind, in money if they have. See, we at the moment, because of the COVID infection, COVID pandemic, volunt volunteers are not actually coming in and helping patients actively, but uh, people are donating in kind, uh, whatever they want. I mean, like people are donating masks, so they're donating, which we provide in, we are providing surgical masks to all our patients, especially if they cannot afford to buy masks. So we are giving them masks and people are donating food. So we also give ration to patients who are poor, especially as many people have lost uh, their uh, source of income during this pandemic. Like the people who are good at public speaking or good at raising funds or good at being going out and, uh, and asking for funds, they can help in that way also. So these are different ways in which people can volunteer at Can Support. So, you know, thank you, ma'am. You know, uh, for all the viewers, there's a link of the Can Support website. There's a link of where they can donate. There's a link of the WhatsApp number where they can all contact and get help, you know, all the days of the week and they immediately reply. I've personally used their helpline. They immediately reply and they're available all the time for all the cancer patients. It's an organization which is thoroughly working to help the cancer patients. So please, 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 all the viewers do whatever you can to help this organization can support in cash, in kind, or in any other way you can. So, you know, we had Dr. Reena Sharma. Dr. Reena Sharma, thanks a lot for being here with us today. And, you know, you've shared very important information regarding can support, regarding cancer patients, and regarding what can be done during the pandemic. It was great having you, ma'am. I would request you to close thanks. this by saying something to all the viewers. Everyone stay safe, stay well, do social distancing, and use masks, sanitize your hands. And we, after the pandemic, maybe you can all come and help us at can support. Thank, thank you, you ma'am. Thank you.